Creation Science Evangelism presents Creation in Common Sense with Eric Hovind. Welcome to Creation in Common Sense. I'm your host, Eric Hovind. Hey, are us creationists just anti-science people? A lot of evolutionists claim that. But did you know every major branch of science was founded by a creationist? Joining me to talk about this are two guys from our creation research team, at Creation Science Evangelism, Jonathan Sampson and Joshua Jocelyn. All right, so Josh, are all real scientists evolutionists? Oh, of course not. Uh, <laughs> we have Johann Kepler, for instance. Ever heard of him? Yes. Uh, this is the founder of modern astronomy. He discovered the laws of planetary motion. He helped develop calculus. Uh, he verified heliocentricity, which is the idea that the sun is the center of the solar system not other the than the Earth. Right. Exactly. So this is a very prominent scientist. But he also said, God is the kind creator who brought forth nature out of nothing. This is a very prominent scientist here who helped found astronomy. But he also believed that God was, uh, created the world about 7,000 years ago. Wow, so incredibly smart, real scientist, and a creationist. A creationist. Wow. Yeah, so we have him to thank for calculus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, there was another guy, Robert Boyle, who, of course, uh, kind of permeated the, the school classes there. Robert Boyle is the modern, uh, the father of modern chemistry. When he was younger, he was able to go and meet Galileo, an elderly Galileo, who worked kind of in the same area of Johann Kepler. And Robert Boyle was actually the skeptic of his time, ironically enough, as a Christian. He wrote a book called The Skeptical Chemist, which he kind of refuted the idea that everything was just earth, wind, fire, and water, mm. uh, the four-element idea that even Aristotle um, you know, popularized. Now, at 18, he started the Philosophical uh, School of London, and then one of the main things that he's known for today is writing about his faith in God and his passion for God's written word. Unbelievable. And he also developed, I believe, Boyle's, uh, Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law, yeah. yeah. I've heard about Cole's Law, too. I think that goes good with potato salad. Long, yeah. Long. Yeah. Yeah. So, real smart guy. All right, that's two guys. Yes. They were creationists and scientists. Yes, but they weren't just anomalies either. I mean, have you ever heard of Sir Isaac Newton? This is. Mm, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's considered by many to be the greatest scientist who ever lived. Um, but he also, let's see, some of the things that he's done, he discovered the law of gravity, uh, the color spectrum. He also helped develop calculus. Um, he invented right. the reflecting telescope. I mean, this, and the list goes on and on. This is Mr. Science here. But the interesting thing about him is he wrote very actively against atheism. Furthermore, he believed in a literal six-day creation. So Sir Isaac Newton, possibly the greatest scientist who ever lived, was a literal six-day creationist. Just like us, exactly. the not the greatest scientists that ever lived. <laughs> Much smarter than us, though. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Another great one is Louis Pasteur. This is a guy from the 19th century, regarded as the father of modern microbiology. He actually pioneered the work of microbes and was met with serious hostility and opposition during his time. He was telling people that, you know, it's actually small living organisms that are making you sick inside your milk and your wine. And so he developed a process of pasteurization, which would cook it, kind of to heat it up, hot enough to kill these microbes without destroying the product itself. Um, this is a guy that destroyed the idea of spontaneous generation, that life could just spring magically from nothing. And another guy who undoubtedly and unequivocally was very thankful to his creator and his savior for, for giving him eternal life. Major scientists, all creationists. It's interesting, the, uh, the evolution handbook actually goes through many different scientists that were creationists and how the foundation of science was laid by creationists wanting to study God's incredible creation. It goes on to talk about many prominent evolutionists of the day and their contributions to science. He says there isn't any. I mean, can you think of any uh, major contributions uh, from the evolution theory, uh, from evolutionary scientists? Antibiotic resistance. Oh, nah, God did that. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the Bible is very pro-science. Uh, it promotes scientific research. It says, speak to the earth and it shall teach thee. The fish of the sea shall declare unto thee. Hey, I want to thank you for joining us for today's Creation and Common Sense. We hope you'll always use creation science for evangelism.